Hey guys, in this video, we're taking a look at the budget-friendly Acer Aspire 3. It's sleek looking, large screen, and powerful enough for daily tasks, and made to be a great laptop for students or budget conscious consumers. But it's only priced around $500, so something has to be wrong, right? Well, kind of. So what's up with the Acer Aspire 3? Why is it so popular? And if it's so good, why is it so cheap? How does it compare to other competitors in the price range? And is it worth buying? And after you get it, what can you expect? The build quality of the Aspire 3 is what you can expect from a budget laptop. It's nice looking, but it's noticeably worse than a MacBook or another high-end laptop. The Acer Aspire 3 has an understated design along with a brushed metal finish that gives it a higher end look that won't turn too many heads or become outdated. It's well constructed with a robust plastic chassis, and while I did notice some flexing and bending in the lid and the keyboard deck, it's kind of what you expect at the cheaper price point. It's lightweight and it has a thin profile and it really doesn't take up too much space in your bag, so it's easy to carry around between classes. I also appreciated the rubberized strip on the bottom, which keeps it in place while you take notes. It gives you a solid range of ports to connect your peripherals to, and you get two USB 2 ports and a single USB 3.1 Type-A socket, and an HDMI port, but it lacks a micro SD card reader and a USB-C connection, so you might need an adapter for newer devices. It also has Wi-Fi 5, which provides a reliable and reasonably fast internet connection, along with Bluetooth 4.2 compatibility and an Ethernet port for hard wiring. I thought that the full-size chiclet keyboard was nicely proportioned and it delivered a decent typing experience which was suitable for everyday use, but the number pad is somewhat narrow for larger hands. The keyboard has a soft actuation and a slightly roughened texture with an adequate key travel distance, which is comfortable enough to type on for longer sessions, and it's perfectly good for writing essays. Unfortunately, the keyboard isn't backlit and the keystrokes are a little bit bouncy, but the bed is relatively firm. The touchpad is responsive for fast and accurate tracking, and it actually reacts to inputs in the corners. It's reasonably sized and it provides enough space for control gestures, while the smooth surface responds well to two finger scrolling, and it's easy to glide your fingers on. It has a 15.6 inch LED backlit display with a comfy view anti-glare coating that gives it a matte look, which is nice for viewing documents in brighter light. It has a 1920 by 1080 resolution, and it delivers decent colors and contrast, but the viewing angles are pretty subpar and the color gamut coverage is low. It also lacks some brightness and it can appear kind of dull. It also has poor color accuracy, so creative professionals should definitely look elsewhere, and it has a blue light shield to help protect your eyes during long study sessions. Despite its flaws, I think the display is very functional and it's more than adequate content for streaming and for an everyday laptop for students. I like that the slim bezels provide a contemporary feel and they increase the screen real estate. And the top has a webcam, although the quality is what you expect considering the price. It also features a built-in microphone for video calling. The hinge has 180 degree range and it pulls the airflow from underneath the laptop to help keep it cool. The interior fans are generally quiet, but they can audibly rev up during heavier workloads, and the bottom of the laptop does tend to heat up. You do get two built-in speakers that deliver an impressive volume levels for an entry-level laptop. Even though the sound quality isn't the greatest and it does lack some bass, it's very solid and it will be suitable for most uses. If you're enjoying this video and you're learning something about the Acer Aspire 3, be sure to give the video a like. It helps the channel out a lot, and if you're interested in updated pricing, be sure to check out the links in the description. While the battery life isn't top notch, I thought it was pretty solid, and it gave me around six hours of runtime, which could be extended to up to nine hours with limited usage. So it will last through a lecture or a longer study session. If the battery life is an important consideration, then the Lenovo Chromebook Duet costs significantly less as an alternative, and it offers up to 12 hours of runtime with a superior 1920 by 10 inch touchscreen display and a portable two-in-one design, but it only comes with a smaller 10.1 inch screen, and it has much inferior processing capabilities with only four gigabytes of RAM. You get a 10th generation Intel Core i5 1035G1 core processor with a clock speed of one gigahertz, and you get a maximum turbo speed of 3.6 gigahertz. You can also choose a higher configuration with better specs depending on what you need for your budget. I thought that this was relatively responsive and it performs pretty well when web browsing and watching content or basic Photoshop editing and daily computing tasks, although it's not suitable for heavy editing or processing. It has eight gigs of RAM 
and it can handle a decent workload with some light multitasking, but overburdening it with too many tabs or applications did cause a noticeable drop off in performance and apps tended to load a little bit more slowly compared to other competitors. It also has 250 gigs of high speed SSD storage to slightly reduce load times and you'll have ample space for lecture notes and assignments. For users that need more power for non-multitasking duties, the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 is another affordable option that offers you a faster dual-core 10th generation Intel Core i3 processor with a 2.1 GHz clock speed and superior RAM and storage space. It also has Alexa voice assistant compatibility, but it has a lower screen resolution and a much shorter battery life. The Aspire 3 has an integrated UHD graphics card for better games rendering, but it is by no means a gaming laptop and the frame rate is inadequate for most current games. Overall, I think that the Acer Aspire 3 is a highly regarded affordable laptop that does justify its reputation. It's definitely a budget laptop that you can see and feel from use, but with a respectable processing power, it's still a very good option if you're looking for one of the best laptops for students on a budget, or just a budget laptop in general. If you want to save a bit of money, then the Lenovo Chromebook Duet is cheaper, but it has less wide range use application. The Acer Aspire 3 is a solid laptop that mixes solid hardware with good performance, and it's designed to be an entry level model for basic computing tasks or an affordable laptop for budget choppers. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. For links to updated pricing on all the items mentioned, be sure to check out the description. And if you guys learned something or you found the video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you like short informative tech videos. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.